Well, after an incredible start to life in the Championship, we have in our most recent offline game uh, been put in our place. I hope that's not the start of terrible form, but I've been down this road before, and I think it might be. Hello and welcome to part 85 of It's Coming Home. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we're away against Birmingham and at home against Crystal Palace, both in the Championship. Since you were last with me, the good start to the season continued. Wins and draws all the way through until we went away to Middlesbrough, who absolutely battered us. They just, I mean, they, they were good. They were a good side. Two goals for us absolutely flattered us in this game. Can we get the match stats on here? Um... <laughs> That doesn't tell the whole story, does it? That says we had more shots and more possession. They uh, they destroyed us with counter-attacking football and were just rampant going forward. And whew, it was it was not fun to watch. I'm hoping we're not going to do the same against Birmingham. To be fair, Birmingham are down in the relegation zone. Middlesbrough are joint top of the league. But then we're two points behind that, so... You know, you could you could argue that we were fairly evenly matched. This stuff is still looking very good. Harris still joint top scorer. We still have three players as the top three players for average rating in the division. We've got Matondo going high on assists. Uh, Gregson's looking good for Man of the Match awards as well. Um, it's good that our two fullbacks. I mean, that shows that tells you everything about the way we've played this season. Our two fullbacks and our top scorer are the three best players in the division by average rating, and they really are. These two have been playing as wingers all season long. I've not changed anything on the tactic this season, but for whatever reason, I don't know if there's been a change to the match engine. Um, but they're like different players playing in the same position in the same tactic. That's a bit of a change. Um, if we have a look at Gregson as well, playing in the same position, in the same tactic. Um, again, a massive step up. So I don't understand it. I'm certainly not going to argue with it. It does leave us exposed at the back when they push forward. But more often than not, we go OK. Obviously, sometimes we play against a team like Middlesbrough and they enjoy the fact that we've only got two defenders and our fullbacks are basically playing up here. We're basically playing... A 2-1, two, 2-1-4 one, two, one, is probably the best description of our current tactic. And I imagine we're going to get found out. And hopefully we haven't been. Hopefully that was a one-off. But if we lose these two games as well, we're obviously going to have to change something because that means we have been figured out. But let's let's cross our fingers and hope we can go back, get back to winning ways against Birmingham. We've got Humphreys in goal. A back four of Wehmuth, Rogers, Wright and Gregson with Harrison as the holding midfielder. Fernandes and Sawinski in midfield and then Moss in behind Matondo and Harris. Uh, Matondo is just recovering from injury. So Mick Powell had his nice little run of form. Uh, not form. What? It's harsh to say not form. He had a nice little run in the team. Four goals from 11 games. Certainly not disastrous form. Um, played, the he's played the best he's played since the National League on average rating-wise, but we need to get Matondo back in. Um, it's my knee-jerk reaction to getting thumped by Middlesbrough. Conceded five goals, drop your all-time top scorer. Um, there you go. That's a comment none of you need to make now, because I've done it for you. Let's get into the match. Um, we're huge. Yeah, let's do the underdogs. Let's go back to that. Let's not pretend that the league positions are accurate. Birmingham are a big club. We're a small club. Birmingham are obviously favourites for this game, even if we're currently 12 points ahead of them. We're favourites to go down. They're presumably expected at least a mid-table finish and have just had a poor start to the season. So both both sets of form could easily turn around today. Uh, here is Fernandez though, playing it forward towards Harris, who misses out on it. And uh, Birmingham seem to be first to ever... At the moment, initial impressions look like we're a bunch of kids playing with the bigger boys because Birmingham are first to everything. But here is Wehmuth, best player in the championship on average rating so far. And he plays Matondo in. It wasn't him who did it at all. It was Harrison who played Matondo in. And here is Wehmuth, plays it into Harrison again, who finds Sawinski. This is more like it. Harrison, Sawinski to Gregson. Gregson fires just wide. I don't really know why he's shooting there. We had Harris and Matondo, both three in the middle. He has scored a goal like that already this season. But I, I don't know that he should be resorting to shooting rather than crossing in that situation as a standard move. Fernandez hits the frame of the goal. I think it was offside anyway, but 
We're, we're showing signs of life. We don't look like... Why is that showing two lots of match stats on there? That was weird. Um, Swinski. Swinski again. It's It's been turned in by Matondo. All credit goes to David Swinski there. Uh, but Matondo's the one who actually gets the goal. Let's have a look at it from the other side and just try and work out what's gone on. So it's a free kick from Harrison. Swinski's there with the initial header. And then just battling, battling, battling. And it eventually bobs free to Matondo. It's one of the messiest goals you'll ever see. But we don't care. We just want goals at the moment. Uh, messy or not. And we're 1-0 up. And that's the important thing. If we If we fluke and battle our way to a victory today, then... I'll be very happy because that means Middlesbrough isn't going to be a, a permanent state of affairs. The misery that they piled on us in that last game. But we've been caught out of the ball over the top again here. How many times have I said that sentence? Not just with home. Not just since FM19 has been out. In my life on YouTube, how many times have I said we've been caught out of the ball over the top? It happens a lot. I know it happens a lot. I'm not concerned enough about it to do anything about it, though. I'd rather we were, I'd rather play with the fullbacks getting forward the way they do, than have them back there marking players. I'd rather win six five than one nil, or I'd rather win six five than three nil. To be honest, I like scoring lots of goals, but that was a another sloppy one to give away. It was a, it was a the sort of goal that Kev teams concede. Uh, nil, uh, not nil nil. One one at half time though. Can't complain about that at all. Um, let's. We're not doing too badly. If everyone continues to work hard, we can win this. That is absolutely the case. And fingers crossed, we can we can find a way to squeeze a win out of this somewhere in this. I can't believe I'm trying to beat Birmingham away from home. We would be if you when we were looking at the preseason fixtures, we would be absolutely delighted to pick up a draw in this fixture. So we don't need to try and win the game at all. We just need to try not to lose it. Matondo with the cross. Sawinski eventually ends up with the ball. Moss plays it out to Gregson. Hopefully he'll cross this time. Um, he tried to, but it didn't go, go anywhere and didn't even manage to win a corner with it. And now Birmingham have got the counter-attack on and we need to be alive to this. The back four are all back and in position, which is a bit of a novelty. Let's see if they're capable of defending. Oh, no. Who, oh, actually, no, to be fair, he did get there in the end and Moss has done excellently there. And now we've got the counter-attack on. He can't beat the man to find the two strikers over. Eventually gets the cross in, does find Matondo. And Matondo wasn't looking like last season's Matondo pre-injury. He's now back from his injury and scored two goals. So perhaps he needed that fluky goal that kind of hit him and went in to bring him back to life. Uh, because that was a much better finish. And it makes it Birmingham 1, home 2, just about on the hour mark. We do need to keep an eye on Matondo's fitness levels because he, was, he wasn't fully fit before the game started. So we can bring Mick Powell on if we need to. But I think Matondo fancies a hat-trick. He's there again. And look at that. That's a man who's not fully fit. Matondo's back, everybody. Fernandez to Rogers to Fernandez, Matondo again. And we've, we're this high up in the league with our top score from last year not starting to play well until today. What a ridiculous world we live in. Right, let's let's have a little look. What are we going to do? I should take Matondo off, but I want him to get his hat-trick and Harris isn't playing particularly well, so we're going to bring Harris off for Mick Powell. Get him on, see if he can grab us a goal. I don't know that we necessarily need to change anything else. How are we doing for fitness levels in the midfield? We could probably get Bakinson on into that midfield. Swinski's looking a little bit tired. So let's get Bakinson into the midfield. I want to save the final substitution for Matondo. I want him to get his hat trick, and then we're bringing O'Callaghan on immediately, just to try and save Matondo's fitness levels. But I don't know why. I've, but I've just explained exactly what I'm going to do. But it's so instinctive to hit, hit, to hit pause on 80 minutes that I did it anyway. I literally just said I'm waiting to make that substitution. Why are you clicking pause, Kev? Nobody knows. Are we holding on here? I think we might be. Greg, Gregson's now picked up an injury. But it doesn't matter because it's Birmingham 1, home 2. Matondo is back, boys and girls. And we've just, we've gone back to winning ways, which is just marvellous stuff. And hopefully we can do it again against Palace and continue this ridiculous start to the season as we try and collect 50 points as quickly as possible. That's what's happening here. We want to hit 50 points by Christmas because then we're safe and we don't have to worry about the rest of the season and we can just slowly drift down the table and not worry how far we'll drift. 
But let's go play Palace and hopefully keep that run going. No changes for the Palace game, then the injury to Gregson, not significant enough to keep him out for any length of time, which is splendid. Let's get into the game. Let's have another win. Imagine a win. We could finish the episode top of the table, top of the championship at the start of November. That would be very pleasant. It seem, seems unlikely, but it would be very pleasant. And we're the favourites. What? That's that's escalated quickly from relegation. We're now favourites to beat Palace, are we? My, genuinely we are as well. That's mad. Can we passionately say, I want you to pick up from where... No. So just calmly, I want you to pick up from where you left. I can't, in good conscience, tell this group of players that they're the favourites against that group of players. It just feels wrong. <laughs> but I'll definitely tell them, just you played well last time. Play well again today. Let's see where that leads us. This is mad. Right, Fernandez plays it forward from Matondo to Chase. Harris is in the middle. Cross comes over. Harris is there and it's off the... I think it just sort of hit the top of the net. I don't think it even hit the, uh, hit the crossbar. But... Nothing further comes of it, and we start again with a goal kick with right. He plays it forward to Gregson. The fact that that's our centre back playing to our right back, and did you see how far he had to kick the ball forward to get to him? And he crosses to our other full back. I love how attacking they are. The problem is when teams counter attack like they are now, although Wearmouth has made it all the way back, which is just ridiculous energy levels on his part. Uh, but I don't think Gregson had made his way back on the other side. Is that Gregson? Oh, no, that is Gregson. Just poor defending. It wasn't anything to do with being in the poor position. Let's just try and keep an eye on who is where. So that's Gregson. I don't know why he's come this far in field. It's not that he was too far forward. It is the man he's supposed to be tracking who scored. But for some reason, he's come all the way over here rather than actually tracking him. So I don't really understand. <laughs> it was it was the fullback's fault, but not for the reasons you would expect. Let's have 10 minutes of passion to try and get back into it before half-time because, you know, we're the favourites for this match, don't you know? Um, we Even with a defeat, we still end the episode in the in the playoffs, which is, quite frankly, absurd. But I'm, not, I'm just not going to argue with it. I'm going to ride, ride, roll with the good times until they inevitably end, which I think we are sort of sputtering towards the end of them now. Right, let's assertively show me something different in the second see that's not upsetting them this is mad I think they might be starting to believe their own hype and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing if they if they actually go out there and play like championship promotion challenges then I'll then I guess I have to talk to them like championship promotion challenges but none of these players are championship players theoretically they should all be quite happy to have over overperformed as much as they have already and leave it at that. But I guess I guess they want more. Let's make a substitution. We're going to bring Powell on for Harris again. Anthony Harris has been poor on this episode. Considering he was the top scorer in the championship going into it, he has had a very poor episode. Uh, Moss also not playing great, but we don't really have anyone. Who could... I guess we could push Sawinski forward, but to be honest, Sawinski could just as easily come off. In actual fact, I'm going to bring uh, Fernandez off, put Perry onto that side. And then Masinski can't really do box-to-box -box midfielder. I like to have Perry there. He looks very good there. But we'll do that. And we're going to ask for some creativity to go with it. And hopefully grab an equaliser from somewhere. That's what we're looking for. A Mick Powell penalty for an equaliser. I don't care how it happens. Um, I just want it to happen. There's not a game-changer among them. Really. I mean, I say that. Let's give, let's give O'Callaghan a go. We brought him in to be a part of this team let's give him the opportunity to show that he's a, he's a man who he's going to score goals for us right we've got Powell and O'Callaghan up front now probably about the 50th strike partner Mick Powell has had in his time here at home actually it's probably not that many because a lot for a lot of those years he was playing up front on his own but still that's a great bit of defending from his right the number four um, just gets enough on it to push it behind for a corner um, although I still don't. I don't rate our chances of breaking from it. Although that being said, Humphreys collects it, but it just seemed to slow down a little bit. We're going to finish off with ten minutes of passion, but I think we're just playing against a team who are much better than we are, as expected. This is going to happen a lot this season, but 
for some reason, the game didn't think that's what was happening before it started. I thought Sawinski was going to conjure up the perfect cross for Perry there to to allow us to have a late equaliser that we don't really deserve. Sawinski's been... Oh, no, Sawinski made the foul. It looked like he'd been fouled. But apparently Sawinski was the rascal in that scenario. I can't really complain too much about beating Birmingham away and then narrowly losing it home to Crystal Palace. Um yeah, we'll just give it an unlucky and another day we'd have fluked a, a draw there at least. But I'm just I'm still very happy with the league situation that we currently find ourselves in. We are, all we care about is avoiding relegation this year. And if we have another half dozen games like the last half dozen, we're gonna be almost there. Um so let's let's do let's come back for we'll come back for Preston and Rotherham. We'll literally go Actually, no, should we do the Christmas games, Sunderland and Villa? Or is that pushing it a little bit too far? No, we will do Preston and Rotherham. We don't, we will just do six games and then come back again because the wheels could be about to come off and I don't want to leave it too long. Preston. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.